of you showed up here today with these beautiful American flags and you made your voices heard. So they're not discussing... Okay, so that is one of our state's congressional candidates congratulating a crowd for protesting outside of our health department. Uh, they said that leaders had a plan to round up anyone who won't get vaccinated in internment camps. Uh, that plan never existed. But the lie spread like wildfire throughout Washington anyway. And joining us now to talk about it is co-founder of UW's Center for an Informed Public. We got Kate Starbird with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. So many questions for you this morning. Kate, let's start with this. How did this conspiracy theory get to the point that people rallied in Tumwater? And can you set the record straight for anyone watching who might believe in this lie? Oh, my gosh. There's a, there's a long story here and there's a short story. And I think we, you probably want me to tell the short story. Um, there... Um, the origins of this rumor go back a long way, um, and actually, we can tie some of it back to claims in the summer that there were there were going to be internment camps for people that weren't vaccinating. False claims during the summer, and, and some of them tie back to a satirical website that was actually a joke that began to spread um, from people who were worried and afraid. This time, it came back because the the Washington State was going to revisit uh, a law that was on the books since I think 2003 related to um, HIV/AIDS, and they were actually going to try to to remove some stigma. Around Around the language of that law, but because they were re revisiting that part of the code, someone either misinterpreted or strategically used um, used that sort of legal action that was happening in in, in Olympia and and took that and decided to um, to, to make this false claim uh, about internment camps and that somehow the government was going to um, put put people who wouldn't get vaccinated into internment camps. And it's not true. Um, and, and in fact, it's been debunked both by Republicans and Democrats. And, and, and it, for those of you that think that it's polarized, we've seen some Republican political pundits debunk it as well. But the reason it spread is because people right now are really vulnerable to this. We're, we're really, um, we're disrupted and we're, we're upset about the pandemic, and um, and there's folks. Uh, it, it, everything's been politicized, and and I really have a lot of empathy for the folks that became to believe this because um, I think we're really in, in a place where we're vulnerable to conspiracy theorizing and 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 being poli politically manipulated. Actually, I mean, when Kate, when you talk about people who do believe these things and the rampant misinformation, especially all over social media, we've got upcoming elections, we've got COVID. How do we look out for this stuff? And also, I mean, once someone is down the rabbit hole, I, I, is there any is there any way back for them? Oh, that 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 last one is a hard one. I don't think I, I can answer. I think there are way ways back, but often the pathways down the rabbit hole, which are like googling and seeing things on social media, those that's easy. Coming back from the rabbit hole. That's hard, and that's not going to happen alone in a room on your computer. That's going to happen in conversations with other people who care about you and who you care about that can help you kind of, you know, start to question some of this, some of this uh, ideology that develops where you just don't trust anything or anyone. And again, I can see why those rabbit holes are really compelling right now, um, because we've been disrupted for two years and we've had a polarized political space for 10 or, you know, much longer, but like in, in social media, that's been happening for, you know, uh, over a decade. And so I can see why people are really vulnerable to this, but the solutions are really going to be about having to come together, build bridges with family members and loved ones and, mm -hmm. and begin to talk over through things and and begin to recognize that like not everything is a conspiracy <laughs> things are just bad right now it's just it, but it's not a conspiracy and kate you said in a tweet recently for people with loved ones who fall into misinformation you mentioned life buoys what what are you talking about there you know for me it's it's always about leaving the bridges open for us to have conversations and that's not possible for everyone i've heard stories i hear so many stories doing research in this space about people who've lost loved ones in the sense that they just can't talk to them anymore because things are so contentious and they're you know politically polarized and they just don't share the same reality um, and not everyone can, but for those of us who can, I feel like, you know, leaving those, those, those bridges open or, or keep throwing out the life buoy and saying, you know, I'm here, let's talk about it. Um, it if we can, I'm not going to jump in the waters with you, um, but I'll throw, I'll throw a life buoy out and we can have conversations and hopefully try to repair, repair some of um, what's happening. I feel like, you know, in many ways, our, our families, our communities and our country is sort of breaking apart. And the crux of this is that we're losing a shared reality. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's really impacted, as you mentioned, families and relationships and, and so many things. I mean, Kate uh, Starbird, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, good conversation to have. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely.